Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I have a list in front of me of all of the details and perks and bonuses and super awesome things about the upcoming New Year sale. So let me just get right to reading them so you can get to listening to this and going to buy stuff. Here's the thing. It's running from December 28th to January 8th, so plenty of time to buy. Next, the RP Diet Coach app is going to be in a bonus subscription price for $89.99 annual subscription. That's $15 a month and then $89.99 annual. That's a huge savings. Give that some thought. Next, templates and eBooks are gonna be something like 30% off, but a few of the special items will be up to 80% off. So please do check that out. One-on-one -on -one coaching, which we almost never discount, we really discount it once or twice a year, is 10% off. That's a huge deal. Get one of our expert PhD coaches to take you all the way through a diet or training process with a big discount. And lastly, apparel is 15% off. Folks, get to the RP website as soon as you can. Buy as much stuff as you can because Lamborghinis simply do not buy themselves. See you guys next time. Hey, folks, it's me, Dr. Mike, and welcome back to another episode of Hypertrophy Myths. Today's myth is alternating press and hold. And as usual for these myths videos, we're going to talk about uh, what the myth is, the actually good things that uh, it can uh, convey and advantages it can give you, some of the bad stuff, which is clearly the mythical part, and then some take homes, some real talk to let you know which way to go afterwards. So we don't just want to beat up on a concept and say, see ya. We want to beat up on it and say, okay, this is what we learned, and here's how to make your better training even better still. So. The myth here is people do this thing with dumbbells, and I'm sure you've seen it before. They take two dumbbells out, they press the dumbbells off their chest, and they sit there, and they will press with one arm until some number of reps is achieved, they'll hold it, and then they will press the other with the other arm. And then when they finish, they're rack both dumbbells. And so, those, wait, hold on a second. What's the myth? Like, that clearly happens. The myth is that this is a good idea. Okay. Well, hold on a second. We have to cut it some slack. What kind of slack can we cut it? Now, to be honest with you guys, when I had this topic come up and I, we uh, decided to make this video, I go through and I have a template that's, you know, the myth, the good, the bad, and the real talk. And I sat here and thought about how this could be good for a little bit of time, maybe more time than usual, and I still came up with almost nothing. What did I come up with? Well, it, it builds an interesting and cool looking skill. It's kind of funky and neat to be able to like isometrically hold something and then press something else. So I guess that's kind of neat. Um, and it might transfer well to some activity that occurs like that. It, um, I did think about this for a little bit and nothing came up. I'm not that smart though. And I've been around the world and seen a whole lot of sports. So maybe there's something that you do in parkour or some shit that does exactly that. Uh, nothing comes to mind. I'm sure maybe some of you guys can hypothesize in the comments below. Uh, and then the other thing is, Maybe it's cool to bring up just like one pec or one delt or one tricep because one arm is isometric. That doesn't cause a lot of hypertrophy. The arm that you're moving actually grows. And um, you can use the, – the thing is if you said, OK, I have a dumbbell and I have a bench and I want to train one arm only with presses, you can't just take one dumbbell out of the rack because as soon as you press it, you'll fall over. So by having this dumbbell in your hand – even an extension if you like, it allows you an auto balancing. So for that, it can work. Uh, later, you will see why there are other many, very many better ways to do this. So what is the bad? Number one is the alternate arm gets, as the French say, and since I studied in France for many years, culinary expert, I will use some French today. If you need to turn on Google Translate, I'll wait. All right. A little tired. Uh, the other arm becomes a little tired. So you start out with your right arm and you do 10 reps. Okay, the entire time that you're doing that, you are isometrically holding a weight here and that tires out the tricep, front delt, and chest. And so when you're done pressing 10 reps with the one arm, you move on to this arm and you may get something like five or six reps. Unless this arm was 20 RIR and then you can do both. There is a way that if you start with your dominant arm, sorry, your non-dominant arm, you start with your weaker arm, you can get them to balance out more, but you need to have a hell of an asymmetry for like 45 seconds of isometric fatigue to equal reps. And the quality of those reps, after you've tired your systemic abilities out here, then you have to hold this out and do this. None of the arms are really getting a good workout, and especially that second arm. So 
there's not a whole lot of anabolic stimulus that comes from isometrics, especially locked out isometrics. Like if it was mid-range isometric, your muscles would have to work harder. But it's really like loading the joints and the stability function of the muscles and your nervous system for paying attention to that. There's just not a lot of growth that comes from that and not a lot of strength and just, God damn it, not a lot of anything. It kind of sucks. The next question is, what the hell is the benefit of this versus just a two-arm press like normal? And the answer is not much, if any. Now, it is really true that there is something called a bilateral deficit when you produce force with both sides of your body. Technically speaking, it is in at least some cases, you can produce more force per half side if you don't work with the other half. So like you can single leg press often more than you can two leg press uh, times two or divided by two. So if you can double leg press, let's say 500 pounds, typically you can single leg press maybe like 300 pounds. So that doesn't add up because it should be 250. But because you're not using one leg, your nervous system and your focus can be more on the other leg and you can actually push more with that side. Um, however, this tends to happen almost exclusively in highly stable scenarios. The way they demonstrate this in the laboratory is they literally tie you to a fucking single leg leg extension machine. And then you do a single leg where the whole machine is holding you in place and you can really just grind into one leg. In this scenario, it almost certainly wouldn't happen. And what ends up happening is the pressing with the one arm, you probably won't get any more reps with that one arm uh, versus pressing with two arms, except getting double the benefit in half the fucking time. So in this case, it probably doesn't do anything anyway and is thus not a great idea. And you could say, okay, but there may be a situation in which if I really like this exercise, I've been practicing for a while, I really can uh, get it to be stable and I can grind a couple more reps out with each side. Sweet. That'll only be in the first set because then you'll get so tired holding them, it won't happen in the second, third, and fourth sets after. But even if that's the case, if we're training for hypertrophy and muscle size, then why would we want marginally more force production? Anything in the 5 to 30 rep range and the concomitant force you have to generate to get those kinds of reps is already roughly equivalent for hypertrophy anyway. So if we can produce a little bit more force, like why don't we just produce a little bit less force and do more reps? There's just no good reason I can think of that you would do such a thing. And if you say, well, no, hold on, but what if we're training for strength? Well, if you're training for strength, then you want a super stable situation. So this is completely rolled out for strength to begin with. So it's like a bad for strength for sure. And then we're like, but what about hypertrophy? Then it's bad for that too. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. Now, here's the thing. There are better alternatives to doing this. And that's sort of critique number three. First of all, you can just take the dumbbell and leave it on your chest for the non-moving arm. It'll rest on your chest, provide the same counterbalancing, and you can fucking crank this one out without having to fucking be tired holding the other dumbbell out for no goddamn good reason. And then when you switch, you put this dumbbell down, and then you go with the other arm. It's weird, it's wacky, it's still probably stupid, but at least it's better than holding it out at extension. I'll tell you later why I think people do the hold out of extension, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There are many better alternatives. If you do insist on training unilaterally for your pecs or tri triceps and shoulders, which is maybe a fine idea, I will say, for those of you curious, and at some point we should make a video about this, uh, unilateral training in general is insanely overrated for hypertrophy and strength. It has some uses in uh, sport performance and carryover, but it's just, it's much more a parlor trick than anything that is useful. It has its uses. I'm not insulting it, uh, but it's not this magical thing that everyone needs to be doing. And I'm sure if you YouTube right now, everyone needs to be doing unilateral training. You got 150 fucking videos by people who are mostly wrong. If you do insist on unilateral training, and there are good reasons to do it, there are like a trillion better ways to do this. One of them, maybe the best, is a hammer strength press machine. Any of the hammer strength presses, you can load the same weight on both sides. You take one handle and you grab it, but you don't push it out. You just grab it so that it stabilizes you. And then with the other handle, you do as many as the fucking presses as you want. Then, because you wasted almost no energy holding that handle because it was just static and you're not even lifting the weight, it's still on the fucking support, you can grab this and then do this. Problem solved. You don't have to do this weird dumbbell nonsense for no reason whatsoever. Uh, it's tough. This is a tough one because it's, I'm trying to cut it so much slack and there's no slack coming out. What is the number one reason that people do this exercise? My gentle hypothesis 
is that is dumb shit they learn in high school football, man. That's just what they do in football because you got to hold fuck nine and back and you got to punch your way through whatever stupid shit that people justify to themselves. It's way too much specificity and way too little overload. It's not something you should do in the weight room. The way you make better football players is you get them to take their bench press and increase it by however many percent as possible. And then they just, the rest is football technique and handled in the actual, uh, on the football field training with offensive line coaches and stuff like that. And all you need football players to be generally strong and generally explosive. You don't need to do one arm at a time, crazy fucking bullshit. Another thing, the reason why people do it is it looks cool and it's maybe a little fun to balance. It's, it's definitely not boring. You know, you don't really do so many dumbbell presses in the gym until you're like, I need a little change. And sometimes people change to this. And, um, you know, it gives you attention at the gym. There's always some like jack dude who played football at a relatively high level who comes to the gym and he takes the 90s and he presses them both. And you're like, all right. And then he just goes like this. And someone's like, dude, he's doing that with one arm. Holy shit. And he's not thinking it through. So there's definitely that. But I will say this. If you want to be jacked, you do shit that works. You don't do shit that looks cool, but clearly just doesn't make any fucking sense. I will say, if you can rationalize this, if you can steal men, the one arm at a time dumbbell press while you hold the other arm at extension, please do so in the comments. And I don't mean that facetiously. I mean, seriously, like I want to know about it. I want to hear about it. I want to hear what you have to say. Um, and if you say some cool shit, I'll, I'll holler and I'll give you props. And if you say some stupid shit, I probably won't say anything at all. It'll just be, I'll say dumb shit every now and again. Maybe this video is stupid. Maybe there's a magical reason I didn't think of. If that's the case, hit me up. In other words, buy shit, link, subscribe, bio, TikTok, box wipe, whatever people say. I'll see you guys next time.